Welcome to my presentation. Um, I'm very honored to have received this prize and I would have really liked to be here in person to give my presentation and to receive this prize. But unfortunately, I'm in the fieldwork in rural Ethiopia and I could not make the trip back to Germany. Since I'm not here to answer any questions or respond to any comments, I've noted down my email and I'm happy to communicate uh, about any questions over email. My PhD was about biodiversity conservation in traditional farming landscapes and I focused mainly on birds and large carnivores in Transylvania. So agricultural landscapes are tightly linked social ecological systems in that the, syst in that the social system um, modifies the ecosystem, for example, through land use, and the ecosystem influences the social system, for example, through the provisioning of ecosystem services. And especially traditional agricultural landscapes are tightly linked social ecological systems. However, many of these traditional farming landscapes are under current threats for mainly external drivers such as social, economic, political and cultural changes, and they often lead to land use change, which can lead to major biodiversity losses. I worked within an interdisciplinary team that looked and tried to understand the changes that work on these social ecological systems and find ways for its sustainable development. Our study area was in Transylvania, in central Romania, as you can see on the map, and was located in the foothills of the Carpathian Mountains. So the region is characterized by small-scale, uh, low-intensity farming, has low agrochemical inputs and a high degree of manual labor. And this way of farming has created um, an exceptional biodiversity. But this biodiversity is currently under threat from uh, potential land use change, especially intensification and abandonment. So for biodiversity conservation in the region, it's really important to understand the drivers that maintain the social ecological system. And my PhD thesis was set in this framework, and I tried to identify system properties that facilitate biodiversity conservation in traditional farming landscapes through a social ecological case study on birds and large carnivores. So my empirical research looked at land use effects on the ecosystem, and particularly I looked at land use effects on bird diversity, bears, and trophic interactions between mammals in the forest. And I looked at one particular traditional land use types, um, namely wood pastures, and I looked at trees, woodpeckers, and bears. And then I looked at how the ecosystem influences the social system through human-bear interactions. So bears get into conflicts uh, with humans um, over livestock predation, damage to crops, beehives, and orchards. And here I was especially interested in the drivers uh, of human carnivore coexistence. And since my time is limited, I cannot really go into detail in this empirical research and will just focus on six um, key messages in this presentation. So we identified six system properties that facilitate biodiversity conservation in traditional farming landscapes. So first, at the region scale or the landscape scale, similar proportions of the main land use types, arable land, forest and pastures, supported regional biodiversity. For example, it supported bear uh, distributions through connectivity between major forest patches, but also spillover between the different habitats for birds. So we did not find specific communities of birds in arable land or in pastures. Second, complementary or supplementary habitats supported species outside the core habitat, as you can see on these pictures. So forest specialists like woodpeckers and brown bears occurred in the forest, but also outside of the forest, for example, in wood pastures. And also birds with different habitat specializations were found in meadows, pastures, and arable field. As an example, the corn crake, which is a threatened uh, bird species in Europe, is considered a grassland species, but was equally often found in arable land. So at a smaller scale, gradients in woody vegetation govern and heterogeneity supported a range of uh, birds, uh, from open landscape to forested landscapes um, provided habitat for birds with different habitat specializations. This heterogeneous, heterogeneous landscape is mainly maintained by traditional land use practices. For example, as you can see on this picture, is where people are cutting hay manually, and this creates different sward heights throughout the season, which helps, for example, ground nesting birds. But also traditional land use practices like Guarding livestock with shepherds and dogs fosters a human carnivore coexistence by limiting predation. And then carnivores on its own have an important function within the ecosystem. Top-down carnivore regulation uh, limits herbivore populations in the forest, which may enhance forest uh, vegetation growth and also reduces um, uh, overgrowth.
overgrazing in the forest. And lastly, human nature connections were important to support human bear connections or human bear coexistence. People value the, national, the natural environment and they see bears as part of the natural environment rather than as a nuisance animal. So building upon these six system properties that we found, I derived uh, a three-level embedded uh, framework that could help biodiversity conservation in these traditional farming landscapes. They start with deep and narrow conservation measures. We can focus, for example, on the small scale at maintaining woody vegetation cover in farmland or focusing on specific rare species. And these measures can be implemented with single farmers and are most uh, similar to the measures that are currently in place. However, this alone should be complemented by broad and shallow landscape scale conservation measures that take a, a larger scale approach that could, for example, focus on maintaining similar proportion of land use types, um, connectivity between habitats or complementary and supplementary habitat. These measures, however, cannot be implemented with single farmers and basically already implies that these conservation measures need to be integrated in the entire social ecological system. And here it will be especially important to acknowledge the values that people have uh, with their landscape. So the take home message from this is the value of interdisciplinary studies in conservation. By having an interdisciplinary study either in a thesis or within a working group, you can make ecology and conservation more relevant to sustainability science. For example, through creating an insight on the values and the needs of local stakeholders and providing thereby a more holistic um, understanding of conservation management priorities that at the same time can look at human well-being and conservation uh, together. So this was my presentation. I would like to thank many people. Of course, I would like to thank the Horst Weir Committee for um, acknowledging my work. And also it was built upon a large set of empirical work. So there were many co-authors involved and many people helping me in the field. And of course, I would also like to acknowledge the funding um, agencies. And here are the publications on which uh, my thesis was built.